Morning, y'all here today at Lake Washita. It's actually the first day where it's been over like 45 degrees in two weeks, so I think we're gonna be able to catch him pretty well today. So if you watched my video last week out here in Lake Washita with Jimmy, we caught him pretty well on a three-quarter ounce football jig in the grass. And so what I'm gonna do today is try to expand on that pattern and fish a new area of the lake I've never been to. And this is the kind of stuff that gets me out of bed in the morning to go fishing. Fishing a brand new area of this lake, I have no spots to rely on, so it's just me versus the fish. And so hopefully today I'm gonna to be able to show you how I break down a new section of a lake I've never fished before and give you some ideas about how to find new spots on your home lake. So let's get after it. Okay, so I made it back in here to the creek I'm fishing and this place is called Rabbit Creek on Lake Washita. And I've heard a ton about this area over the years from tournament anglers and there's always big bags caught out of this creek but I've just never come back in here but it looks really good. Got him. Your fish. First one of the day right here. Nice Kentucky. There we go. That took <laughs> five minutes of the day. Uh, just fished up to my first spot I marked out here um, and uh, caught this nice Kentucky. I saw a bunch of fish busting off this point. And so I was throwing an Alabama rig down there for a few minutes, but then tossed that three quarter ounce football head jig down there just like we were doing last time and that's a nice fish. I'm gonna throw this guy in the live well just for pictures later. I'm gonna release all these fish at the end of the day uh, so I won't keep them too long either. I'll just keep them for a few hours so. Whew, nice fish. That fish just came out here off the end of this main lake point and it's, he's probably in like 30 feet of water in this standing timber out here. There's a point that runs in. There's actually a little bit of a uh, ditch kind of runs in here as well and so Sets up a lot like that spot where I caught him with Jimmy last time. And hopefully there's more fish here. I've been seeing a ton busting. Well, normally when I come to a new area of the lake, it doesn't go this smoothly where I catch a nice like two, two and a quarter pounder in the first five minutes. But uh, I think that really says a lot about that prep I did at home. I didn't just come out here blind and just start fishing. I picked out some spots that I thought looked good and it paid off right away. So. Hopefully, there's more fish on all the spots I picked out. Probably won't work out that well though, I'm thinking. So from prior experience on Lake Washita, I knew these fish like to get on primary and secondary points this time of year. And so before coming out to the lake, I went out to Google Earth and I marked about 10 to 15 good looking points in Rabbit Creek. And this is just gonna help me be more efficient throughout the day because I'll know exactly which spots I wanna hit and I don't have to waste time trying to find areas when I'm actually out on the lake. big one. This is a really good one. I might have just stumbled on the mother load, guys. There's a bunch of fish right here. It's like two minutes later. Look at that large mouth. Golly, that's a chunk. These fish are chomping on this little spot right now. I don't know if it's the overcast or what it is, but oh, they're chewing that three quarter ounce football head jig. Look at that. dude. That's like five minutes into the day. Yeah, that's like my third or fourth cast after I caught that last Kentucky. That fish chomped it. There's a ton of fish on this little spot here. So when you're fishing a new area in your home lake, other than doing that prep at home, you wanna make sure that you're observant of your surroundings. Uh, right now, I was actually fishing a point that I marked right behind me here, and I saw a couple fish bust in the standing timber. And again, I was, like I said, I was throwing that Alabama rig, didn't get bit, and I picked up that jig and tried to copy that pattern I was fishing with Jimmy, and looks like the pattern I was catching them down the lake is working in this creek too. So when you're trying to find new water, First do the home study, be observant of fish busting or birds and stuff like that, and then maybe try to use patterns you've used in the past in other parts of the lake. And right now those three things are working out pretty well for me. <laughs> One thing I'm seeing actually, I don't know if you can see it, but straight ahead of me there's like a cormorant, or cormorant, I don't know how to say it, but there's a bird uh, kind of diving in these trees and there's no birds out to this side of me, 
on this timber I was fishing earlier, but then there's like four or five in this little patch. So uh, birds, again, are a big key when you're trying to find new areas. Got him. Get up your fish. This is a good one. Oh, it's not a bad one. Look at these fish, that's number three off this spot. They're so fat. What in the world? There's so many fish on the spot. That's three fish in like five minutes. I'm gonna get my limit here pretty quick here, guys. Then we're gonna have to go hunting for some big ones. So here's an image of the spot using the topographic maps from my Hummingbird Lake Master Chip. And all it is is a main lake point that sticks out here into Rabbit Creek, and there's some big standing timber on it, and a creek channel runs right off the tip of this point. And the reason I think there's so many fish pulled up on the spot is that there's actually some big schools of bait right off the end of this point they are suspended in these trees. And these bass are pulling up out of the creek channel onto the edge of these trees off the tip of this point and they're just feeding up and I'm just throwing that football jig down there in 25 to 35 feet of water right off the end of that point and these fish are feeding. And I think that last fish I just caught there was actually suspended in one of these trees. I was working my football jig up over a limb, popped it free, and as it was falling, he bit it. And so that's why I like throwing this heavier jig. I mean, we're fishing pretty deep water, but still, I'm fishing a three-quarter ounce jig, and I think I'm getting some reaction bites off this jig today when that bait's falling through those trees pretty quick. Those fish are just kind of grabbing it as it's falling past their face. So. Don't be afraid to fish heavy jigs in the winter time. You saw it in my last video and you're seeing it now. That three quarter ounce football head jig is a fish catcher. And that's one thing about fishing standing timbers. A lot of times these fish will get suspended in trees like this. And when they do, my go-to bait is this three quarter ounce football head jig. Even when they're keying on shad or bluegill, this football jig works super well on those suspended bass and the heavier the better. Sometimes in the summertime I'll actually go to like a one or a one and a quarter ounce jig but I like a little bit lighter jig in the winter time but three quarter ounce is still pretty heavy. So when I'm fishing this bait I'm just casting it all the way out and letting it get all the way down to the bottom and then I'm just kind of picking up my rod and you can feel right there I'm actually over a big tree and so I'm pulling that jig up pretty high over these branches and I'm just kind of waiting for it to pop free. I almost sometimes reel it, boom, it just popped over that tree and then I let it free fall. And sometimes you have to give it line again to let it fall all the way back to the bottom. And a lot of these fish are picking it up as it's falling back down to the bottom. I think they're suspended in these trees, but then there's also fish that I'm catching there just sitting right on the bottom. So normally when it gets back down there, I'll let it sit for three or four, maybe five seconds. So it's kind of a combination of letting that bait sit on the bottom and then pulling it up over these big trees and then letting it fall back down. Now here's an image of the spot using the down scan on my Hummingbird Onyx unit. And as you can see, there's a big school of fish and bait. They're sitting in about 20 to 25 feet of water in these trees. And here's another image of the spot just using the 2D sonar. And again, here is that group of fish and bait. And you can tell that it's fish rather than trees because you can see those hard red returns. That means that it's fish. Okay guys, so I just got done taking my thumbnail. That's uh, four fish right here. I'm just gonna release them real quick to show y'all that I'm letting them go. four fish. Let me get the last one right real quick. There we go. That's the last one. That's a limit of fish in about 15 minutes here. I'm going to keep fishing. I just wanted to get my thumbnail and get these beautiful Washita bass back in the lake, back down where they were feeding. So I'm not messing them up or anything. Here we go. Last one. But that's awesome. Five fish in like 15 minutes on the creek I've never been in before. And uh, it's pretty cool just to kind of look at like a topo map or a Google Earth map at home and then come here and start catching fish right away. And that's what I do in my live streams. If y'all haven't seen those, I do them once a week. Oh, that's a fish right there. But it's a uh, uh, fish of the moment live stream. I go through uh, Google Earth and Avionics on your lakes, on subscribers' lakes. And I pick out spots just like I did on this lake at home. I just pick out spots that I think look good. And today it worked out really well for me. And maybe if I pick out some uh, spots on your home lake, it'll work out well for you too. So check those out. 
<laughs> well, while it's a blast catching these fish, I probably could sit here and catch, you know, 15 pound limit pretty easily. I'm actually going to change up and move areas. I actually find it more fun to find new spots and look for new fish as opposed to just sitting and catching fish all day. That's just me though. But uh, what I'm gonna do is actually check the other 15 waypoints I made in this creek and see if there aren't fish on those as well. So let's see if it works. That's what I'm talking about, dude. Get up here, fish. Yes, look at that. That's a good one right there. Just moved to my like third or fourth waypoint after I uh, call those fish and uh, that's a nice, it's a skinny bass, but that's like a five pound body on that bass right there. He was way up on that point, probably sitting in 25 feet of water, boat sitting in 50 foot right now. And uh, there's a bunch of fish on these waypoints. I guess I did a pretty good job picking out spots today. Um, I'm just gonna throw this guy back. I already got that great thumbnail that y'all are seeing. So uh, that's what, probably 13, 14 pounds just from a fish I put in the boat today. Awesome day so far. Nice fish. He's really skinny though. I mean, that fish could, if he was as fat as those other ones, he could be a four or five pounder. But let's put him back. There he goes. Awesome. So that fish came on that uh, three quarter ounce football jig and uh, he was just up on this big point here. And uh, like I said, I'm sitting 50 foot of water and I just made a super long cast up on top of that point and um, there's you know a creek channel that swings in right next to this point. There's deep timber and I actually idled over the spot before I fished it and I saw a bunch of bait and you know kind of a similar setup to that last place and I mean that was like my third cast in here and he crushed it so maybe there's some more good ones off this point here. And here's a spot using the Lake Master Topo maps again. And all it is is a main lake point that sticks out here in the middle of Rabbit Creek. And again, there's a bunch of standing timber down here. And the fish are setting up in anywhere from 20 to 25 feet of water off the end of this point. And they're just chasing the shad there suspended in the trees off the end of this point. Got him. Got the one. Oh, he popped off. Probably horsing him a little bit too much trying to get him up out of those trees. There's another one though on that football jig. Same spot, seem to be grouped up when you find them. They seem to be grouped up as the pump out going in the back. Let me turn that off real quick. <laughs> but yeah, when, they, when you find them, they seem to be just grouped up on you know, one little area. And this is what you call pattern fishing. I'm basically running a spot that looks identical to the first spot I fished. And you know, normally you're not gonna catch fish on every single spot that looks identical to where you're catching them. You know, I ran three or four other areas that looked really good, but normally I like just cover water. I'll make, you know, 10, 15 casts on spots that look good and then move on, get to the next spot. And you know, I spend a lot of time on my uh, engine just kind of graphing, trying to find trees that had fish in them, things like that. And when you find the right deal, you're gonna catch him. And so you can see why I left that spot over there where I was catching him. I wanted to find new water, uh, kind of run this pattern and see if I could duplicate it. Cause I feel like that's when you really figure out the fish. It's not when you pull up on one spot and get lucky and find them on you know one area. Anyone can do that. But if you can duplicate the pattern and find five or six areas around one creek where they're biting, that's when you know you're really on them. So here's the bait I'm fishing guys. I'm throwing a Strike King three quarter ounce tour grade football jig in the green pumpkin color. And I actually modify them a little bit when they come straight out of the package, I actually just broke off. So I'm gonna show you how I trim this new jig up. Uh, what I do is I trim the skirt so that it's about a quarter inch from the bottom of that hook. There you go, so I just trimmed it down just a little bit. And then what I do is I actually trim up this weed guard as well. So what I'll do is I'll take the corner of this weed guard off right off the end. And I'll just kind of trim the corner of that weed guard off. I think that helps the fish get the bait in their mouth a little bit better and it doesn't um, prevent the weed guard from actually stopping brush and stuff. It still stays pretty weedless. But I just seem to put most of my fish in the boat when I trim that weed guard and I seem to miss a few when I don't. And then all I'm doing is just taking a little Strike King 
uh, Menace Grub, also in the green pumpkin color. This is my favorite trailer in the winter time for winter bass on this football jig. And I'll cut off uh, about, you know, maybe a quarter inch, half inch, something like that, off the top of the head. And then I just kind of thread that Menace Grub up onto the football jig. And that right there is a fish catching machine out here in the winter, in the summer, in the spring. This is actually my favorite bait to throw. I've caught more big fish on a three quarter ounce football head jig than any other bait in my tackle box. And that's my number one confidence bait. I love this thing. And then as long as we're talking about equipment, let me walk you through my rod and reel real quick. Um, for the rod, I'm throwing a Quantum 7 foot 4 heavy action smoke rod. And I think pretty much all rod and reel brands are pretty much the same. They're all really good. I've just been fishing Quantum rods for years, and so that's what I stick with. And uh, speaking of that, uh, this is an old Quantum TE 1160. And this is reel is like 12 years old. You can see it's just torn up. I've been fishing these reels for years. And if you can pick one of these up on eBay, definitely do because they're great reels and they lasted me a long time I put these things through the ringer and then as far as my line goes I'm just fishing a 15 pound Sunline FC sniper fluorocarbon and then I'm also always getting comments on these gloves and uh, these are actually Under Armour cold gear gloves that I found at Dick Sporting Goods like six or seven years ago and I have no idea uh, where to find them now I've looked on the internet and I just haven't been able to find them so uh, if you find them let me know actually because I'd love to get another pair but that's what they are got one get out there fish stay up here Get up in this boat, yes. I mean, if this isn't a pattern, I don't know what it is, guys. That's three spots now. That's my next waypoint after I just caught that fish and uh, another nice bass here on that football jig. Just another point with some standing timber behind me. This is a creek channel swinging up by it. It looks really good. But the key is to have some bait or some fish suspended off the end of this point in the timber. And as long as you have that and then cast that jig up on top of the point, there seem to be a bunch of fish up there, so put this guy back and maybe we'll get another one. Let's see. And then just like the last two spots, this is another main lake point that sticks into Rabbit Creek. And there's actually a creek channel that runs down the right side of this point. And there's a bunch of standing timber up here. And again, those fish are sitting in 20 to 25 feet of water chasing bait in those trees. Oh, there you go guys look at that right here that's a big ball of bait all these lines are fish and every spot that has some fish and some bait out off the drop off the end of the point seems to have fish up on top of the point and i catch them on a football jig for some reason i can't catch them on like an alabama rig catch them suspended they just don't seem to be biting like that but they're definitely biting on this football jig right now and again, my boat's sitting in about 50 feet of water right here, and I'm casting up into about 25 feet of water. And all these fish are coming off the end of these points in about 20 to 25 foot of water. And as you can see, there's a ton of standing timber out in front of all these points I'm fishing. And the fish are kind of in the timber, but I don't think that's really what's holding the fish on these spots. It all has to do with the structure on the bottom. And if your home lake has a bunch of standing timber on it, like this lake does, don't focus too much on the timber itself. Focus on the structure on the bottom. If there's a creek channel down there, if the timber is off the end of a big point, or there's like a ditch running right next to the timber, that's what's going to hold the fish, not the timber itself. And that's pretty helpful because you can actually, like I'm doing today, pattern what type of timber these fish are going to be on. So again, don't focus too much on the cover or the timber itself. Focus on the structure, or like the creek channels and stuff, and you're going to find more fish. Okay, so to quickly recap the pattern I'm on today, first key is that I need to be fishing main lake points. These are all main lake points. Got them. Trying to explain something. I got a freaking toad. This is a big one. Get up here, fish. Oh, yes. Look at that, dude. <laughs> It's just one after another off this pattern. I was trying to recap the pattern I was fishing and uh, while I was talking, that fish hit my jig on the fall. That's a, you know, three and three quarter pounder. Let me actually weigh him real quick for y'all. When I said three and three quarter, I'm at three and a quarter, guys. I got a little bit excited, but I think he's probably like a 
315, 330, something around there. Let me get this scale on him real quick. Let's see right there. I think he's like he said 320. Something like the 324 is what I saw, but uh, so at least I'm guessing the fish a little bit right. I'm calling it out wrong in my head. I'm call I'm guessing them right, but uh, that's a nice you know three pound bass right there. Uh, I take a limit of those any day of the week, but uh, beautiful fish, really dark. These fish are actually probably sitting up in some of this grass off these points. There's grass down there. I don't think that they're really in the grass. Maybe they're just on the outside edge, but uh, that's a beautiful bass right there. Oh, there we go. That's awesome. So let me recap this pattern like I was doing earlier. I need to get my bait out of the water. These fish are going to keep interrupting me. But uh, there's really about three or four keys I've figured out for this pattern. And it seems like I can duplicate it really well around this part of the lake uh, just by looking for those few key things. So the first is that it needs to be a main lake point. So the spots I'm fishing are all main lake points that stick out into this creek. Second is that there has to be good deep water right off the end of the point, like 70, 80 feet of water. And all these points points seem to have like a creek channel running pretty close by so that seems to be helping. Next is that there has to be some bait or some fish suspended off the drop in front of all these points. If I can see any bait or fish on the graph as I idle over the tip of these points there seems to be a bunch of fish loaded up and then the last key is to throw that heavy three quarter ounce football jig and let that thing fall down through those trees pretty quick because I think some of these fish are suspended in these trees so those are the keys I uh, figured out today and so maybe you can take that knowledge and apply it on your lake or at least take the logic of how I developed that pattern and use it on your home lake and maybe find some new fish in a new area next time you go fishing. Well guys, I've only been fishing for about three hours today and I already have eight fish here in Rabbit Creek and I think that's pretty good for my first time in this area and I don't think I'm gonna be able to fit any more fish catches and instruction in this video so I'm gonna end it here and then I'm actually gonna probably go to a new part of the lake or maybe stay in here and try a different bait, fish up shallow or something and if I catch them I'll put that in another video but I uh, hope you enjoyed this one and learned something about how to fish standing timber in the winter time uh, for bass and also about how to develop a pattern and to find fish on a new part of the lake you've never been to before. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you did hit like and subscribe down below. Leave a comment if you have any questions as always and share the video with a friend if you liked it. Really help grow the channel and help me make more content. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.